The U.S. Air Force just recently sank what basically amounts to a small aircraft carrier in the Pacific using the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber and an ingenious new weapon they call QuickSync. Now, this event, which we call a Sync X, was a part of RIMPAC 2024, a massive series of naval war games that seen participation from more than 25,000 military personnel hailing from 29 different nations. There were some 40 surface vessels, three submarines, and more than 150 aircraft all participating in these maritime war games, which included not just one, but two sync X's. But the main event was absolutely engaging, the 890-foot, 39,000-ton former USS Tarawa. Now, this amphibious assault ship was decommissioned back in 2009, and if you find yourself wondering what an amphibious assault ship is, well, in a lot of ways, it's a lot like a small aircraft carrier. In fact, the former USS Tarawa was only a little bit smaller than France's Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier. Now, the United States Navy and Marine Corps use these amphibious assault ships to, you guessed it, support amphibious assaults, usually by delivering landing craft and helicopters. But in more recent years, America's amphibious assault ships have started operating short takeoff vertical landing F-35Bs as well further blurring the lines between amphibious assault ship and aircraft carrier. Now, this massive vessel used to operate with nearly 1,000 sailors and marines on board, but as a part of RIMPAC 2024, it was relegated to target practice. Now, before the B-2 got a shot at it, some smaller anti-ship munitions were tested on the USS Tarawa, including an AGM-158C long-range anti-ship missile launched by a U.S. Navy F-A-18 Super Hornet. Now, the long-range anti-ship cruise missile, or LRASM, is a low-observable or stealthy subsonic cruise missile designed specifically for anti-ship duties. But against a vessel the size of the USS Tarawa, the best you can really hope for is doing some damage to the flight deck. From there, an Australian destroyer, the HMAS Sydney, engaged the USS Tarawa with a naval strike missile, which carries a lot more explosive power thanks to its 880-pound high-explosive warhead. But for a ship the size of the Tarawa, that wasn't going to cut it either. And that's where the B-2, with its quick-sync munition, came in. Now, quick-sync kits are effectively maritime strike JDAMs, and if you're not familiar with JDAMs, or Joint Direct Attack Munitions, they are effectively guidance kits that you can mount on dumb bombs to turn a pretty inexpensive munition into a precision-guided piece of ordnance. In this case, that quick-sync kit was installed on a 2,000-pound Mark 84 bomb. Now, the quick sync kit includes a GPS-assisted inertial guidance system in the tail fins, using those tails to guide the weapon to its target, as well as a new radar seeker installed on the nose to help it identify and calculate the right course toward its intended target, and finally, an infrared imaging seeker mounted on a fairing alongside the side of the bomb to not only help identify and guide the weapon, Weapon toward its intended target, but to locate the ship's hull and guide the bomb directly towards the hull just below the waterline, where it detonates, offering a similar effect to a heavy torpedo launched by a submarine, making this exceedingly good at sinking even very large vessels. And as the Air Force themselves said, it is very tough to ignore a weapon system that can sink a ship the size of the Tarawa with just one hit. Now, this Sink X took place about 50 miles north of the Hawaiian island of Kauai, and because of the participation of some 29 different nations, all partnered with the United States for the effort, and America demonstrating its ability to use stealth bombers to sink aircraft carriers, you'd have to assume China was paying pretty close attention to this whole turn of events. And what I like about this story so much isn't just getting to show you cool clips of stealth bombers and sink Xs, it's also the fact that this is a very low-cost solution to anti-ship warfare. You see, torpedoes and anti-ship missiles are incredibly expensive weapon systems, and that means in a large-scale fight, you run the real risk of losing the war of financial attrition. 
In other words, running out of money or industrial capacity to keep replacing your stockpile of anti-ship weapons. But systems like QuickSync allows you to take really inexpensive weapons we've had laying around since the Cold War, dumb bombs we wouldn't really use for anything else, and turn them into 21st century ship killers that can engage enemy warships from more than 15 miles out after being dropped by a stealth bomber. And that is one heck of a bargain.